There's a second direction that has to happen for a church to get off the plateau, and that is that the church must become not just inwardly focused all the time, taking care of themselves and their own families and their own people, but begin to be outwardly focused. And that's really what we hear in Jesus here. As Jesus comes to his home synagogue that was probably a little stuck, he talks about taking the good news to the poor, the recovery of sight for the blind, freedom for prisoners, the release of the oppressed. And he said, this will be fulfilled in my ministry. Because his focus was, yes, that the synagogue would be good and solid and healthy, but he was outwardly focused, and he wanted the synagogue to be outwardly focused. And it's so interesting, this synagogue didn't like what he said, probably because they knew he was claiming to be the Messiah, and they just couldn't quite see it, and so they even took him to the side of the cliff and were ready to kill him, but he evaporated through their midst. But I think part of it, too, was that the direction he wanted to go wasn't their direction. They wanted a Messiah who would come in and kill the Romans, who would bring the glory of Israel back. They wanted a political Messiah, not one who would be focused on the poor and the oppressed and the brokenhearted. That wasn't the kind of Messiah they wanted. And this can happen in churches too. Some churches, you know, there are parents in some churches that they don't want new kids to come into the church. They don't want a kid to come in that maybe smokes. Because they want their little teenagers to be safe and not be exposed to it. Well, come on, in schools and all over the place, teenagers have all kinds of uh, things going on. And the church must be safe, but it also must be a place where people are welcome. We had one church that had declined, but the pastor and his wife really had a heart for people with addictions. And so they started a ministry that's quite famous in America. Rick Warren started it. It's called Celebrate Recovery. And on Friday nights, the church opened their doors for people who were addicted to drugs, people who were addicted to sex, people who were addicted to alcohol, people who were broken in their lives, people who were newly out, unemployed, the poor, the oppressed, the addicted. And every Friday night for about 10 years, on Friday nights, Celebrate Recovery happened. And first there's a time of worship, and then there's a solid Bible teaching that relates to freedom in Christ. And then people go into their separate groups, the ones that struggle with drugs, to talk about that with a, guide, with a counselor who guides them. And the people who are struggling with alcohol addiction to that group. Those that are in marriages that are struggling because of what's called codependence. So the marriage is falling apart and... Men are counseled by men and women by women on how to restore their marriage. And those that are struggling to, to raise their kids, whatever it is, Friday nights, celebrate recovery that's possible in Jesus Christ. And those people are now flowing into this church and it's growing again because they have an outward focus. It's not just about we four and no more. Another way we can have an outward focus is that many of our churches are doing at least 
every six, six months out of the year, a special focus for people to bring their friends of a specific character and kind. Let me explain it. Some of our churches in January have what they call a Teacher Appreciation Sunday. And the whole time on Sunday morning that month, for that one Sunday, everybody's encouraged to bring a teacher. Might be an elementary school teacher, might be a language teacher, might be a judo teacher, it might be a driving teacher. But the idea is to bring anybody who's teaching and has had an impact of teaching in your life to church and that Sunday morning there's going to be a celebration of those who are willing to give their time to teach others. Maybe a short message from the Bible on how Jesus is the master teacher. Maybe a reception afterwards with some dessert, some food, people mingling and meeting new people. But everything's focused on that new guest who's been invited and included in the church rather than just the same group that comes every week for 20 years. Others will do in, in February for Valentine's Day a Marriage Appreciation Sunday. And so they'll celebrate marriage. They'll have a message from the Bible on how to have a great marriage. And so people are invited and they celebrate what God does in a marriage and that's an Appreciation Sunday. There are Grandfather and Grandmother Appreciation Sundays where you invite your grandma and grandpa again, something from the Bible, a welcome, <clears throat> some kind of special food afterwards. There are Mother's Day, Women's Day, Men's Day, Father's Day. Some churches do Friend Day. You just invite your friends. Others have done Firefighter and Policeman Days where uh, policemen are invited, firefighters are invited, public servants are invited and celebrated, and thanked. You see the idea? It's an outward focus. It's inviting people who maybe wouldn't come, but because there's a special invitation for a special event at the church, the doors are opened. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com. Now there's a third thing that has to happen in a turnaround church. First, the leaders have to rebuild trust and confidence and be careful who they let lead, especially during worship services. If you're going to invite people to come, it has to be well done. And then a special focus and welcome to them. Then the third aspect for a church to begin to get off this plateau is that when new people come, there has to be a very clear plan to include them in the church. Now, my wife worked for three years, and this area can be called welcoming guests. My wife worked for three years in a church in this area. And her responsibility was this, and that was to get the names of people who were new to the church by email, usually. Maybe they had registered their children in, in the nursery. Maybe they had given some money. Maybe they were asked to come to the newcomer area and they were given a gift and they were asked to give their email address. Maybe a friend gave it to them. But then once every month, there was what was called a newcomer's luncheon. Sometimes it was called lunch with the leaders. And the idea was that people who come to a church once are a guest. And they might come again and again as a guest, and they're just kind of looking at things. They're trying to decide whether or not they like what they see. Well, then um, there comes a moment in time when a guest decides that they want to explore more about what's going on in this church and what it means to be part of the church. 
And the mistake that some churches make is they immediately try to say to this person, well, you need to become a member. They try to get them in a membership class. They teach them all the doctrine, all this heavy stuff. They're not ready for that. What should be done is a newcomer's luncheon where the basic ideas of the church are communicated and questions are taken. And once a month, the new people are around the other leaders of the church and they begin to meet them and they are comfortable over a luncheon after church, a newcomer's luncheon. And then it's explained to them that we do have Bible studies. We do have these kinds of classes. We have these kinds of ministries. And uh, maybe there's a table set up with the leader of the children's ministry and people can go over and sit down and talk to them. Maybe the leader of the youth group is at a table and they can go over and talk to them. So there's an intentional way to try to include newcomers as they move from being a guest to a newcomer.